Let's get started. Last time we were talking about groundwater and we will continue uh, talking about the groundwater. So we learn the defi definition of the groundwater and we know that the groundwater found on the pores of the soil and sediments plus the uh, narrow fracture in the bedrock. And we know the uh, distribution of the ground water. We discussed that. And also we discussed the importance of ground water. And we discussed the distribution of the ground water inside the earth. We have the soil moisture. We have the unsaturated zone. We have the water table, capillary fringe and the zone of saturation. And also we said that the we have a variation in the water table. It depends on the precipitation. And we said that the water table is going to be monitored in order to have good resource management. And we talked about the interaction between the groundwater and the streams. The stream can gain water or it can lose water, or we could have a combination. Maybe we have gain in some sections and lose in others. And we discussed the factors that influencing the storage and the movement of water. We discussed the prosody say that the prosody is the ability of soil to store water and the permeability the ability uh, the ability uh, of the soil in order to transmit the water inside it and we discussed also the movement of the groundwater we said that it's controlled by the gravity and the pressure differences and in this picture we say that we have recharge area and we have discharge area in the recharge area because of the, because of the precipitation the water it will infiltrate inside the groundwater and in discharge area the groundwater will try to supply or provide the stream with water think last time stop here today we are going to continue our discussions so uh, in order to understand how the groundwater uh, the movement of the groundwater we need to know some uh, uh, measurements help us to understand the movement so the first thing need to be known is the velocity of the groundwater is proportional to the slope of the water table. If you are looking in this figure, we have assume this one is point A and this one is point B. Here we have H1. H1 represent the elevation of one point on the water table. So here we have the elevation of the one point on the water table. And here we have elevation of a second point. So the water is going to move from point one towards point two, mainly because the slope of the water table is higher from here to here. And we call this feature or this factor, we call it hydraulic gradient. So hydraulic gradient is the slope of the water table and equal H1 minus H2, which means that the difference in height between point A and point B, and we are going to divide it by the distance D. D represent the horizontal distance between the two points. So the steeper the slope, it means that the faster 
the velocity of the water. So the hydraulic gradient is the water table slope. Also, it's important to know another factor, which is hydraulic conductivity. So groundwater flows more rapidly through sediments having greater permeability. So if I have greater permeability inside the soil, that means the movement is going to be greater than other material which having lower permeability. And this factor is known as hydraulic conductivity. So we have the hydraulic gradient, which is the water table slope. So the steeper the slope, the faster the uh, water movement, and also the hydraulic conductivity, which depends on the permeability. If I have higher permeability, that means the velocity is going to be higher as well. And also I can determine the discharge. Remember the discharge. Discharge is the actual volume of the water that flows through an aquifer in a specified time. And in order to calculate this one, we will use the following formula. It's also known as Darcy's laws because the contribution of the uh, scientist Darcy. So in order to calculate the discharge, it will equal K multiplied by A. K is the hydraulic conductivity. Uh, it depends on the permeability. And of course, uh, any type of soil, it has uh, its own uh, permeability or its own hydraulic conductivity. And we say that uh, if you have sand or gravel, then the hydraulic conductivity is going to be higher. And if you have clay, that means the hydraulic conductivity is going to be lower because the permeability of the clay is low. Also, it depends on the A, which is the cross section. If you have bigger cross section, that means you are going to have bigger discharge. And we have H1 minus H2 over D. These represent the hydraulic gradient. In some reference, it's going to be referred by the letter I. So we could have said that Q equal K multiplied by A multiplied by I, where I is the hydraulic gradient. And the hydraulic gradient equal H1 minus H2 over D. And this one represents the slope of the water table. So the Darcy's laws law depends on the hydraulic gradient, depends on conductivity, and it depends on the cross-sectional area. So if you know all of this, you will be able to determine the discharge. So again here in this figure, will be able to calculate the hydraulic gradient. And we know, we need to know that we have different scales of movement inside the ground water. Remember, the ground water, it could be a few square kilometers, or it could be thousand of square, uh, square kilometers. So it could be very small, or it could be very large. And we are going to have many uh, zones here inside the groundwater itself. So the first zone, we will call this sub, yeah, we'll, we'll call the movement here is the uh, near surface movement. So here we have the near surface movement. In that area, we have the uh, discharge area here, and we have, we have the recharge area and here we have the discharge area. So in the near service zone, we, we could have recharge process or discharge process. And the other zone, which is, uh, which is referred to by the uh, red uh, arrows here, we call this sub-regional zone or sub-regional system here. So, in that region, we are going to say, we are going to see that we have some errors try to contribute to the uh, discharge process, while the other is moving from that point to that point, mainly because of the uh, steeper, steeper ground service or steeper water table. So here, the water table is steeper, 
that means the water it will move from this location to that location also like i said in this region here the sub uh, the sub regional system will contribute to the discharge area and the last area we are going to uh, call it a deep regional system here we have some places where we have low hydraulic conductivity we have aquator so whenever we have aquator the aquator is going to prevent the movement of the water so the movement of water is going to be very difficult except in location we don't have a quarter like this location so in this case some waters will try to move into the deep regional system and again the water is going to move from this region to that region here mainly because of the slope of the water table so we have three regions we have the near service this one we have the sub regional and we have the deep regional system so we can see the movement of the ground water okay so any question before we are uh, moving to the next point which is going to yes, we will we will be talking about the wells okay do you have any questions yes please Doctor, uh, I didn't get the, the difference between the uh, hydraulic gradient and hydraulic conductivity. I, so I the hydraulic the gradients, the hydraulic gradients, it depends on the difference in height between that point and that point. So if that point is higher than that point, that means the water, it will move from point one to point two. The higher the difference, it means that the higher the velocity. Mm -hmm. Okay, while the other one, for example, if the type of the soil here is clay, if you have a clay soil here, yeah. then that it will reduce the movement of the water because like we previously mentioned, the clay soil will prevent the movement of the water because we have lower permeability inside the clay soil. On the other hand, if you have gravel soil here, that means the permeability is going to be very high, which means that the uh, velocity of the water, it will increase uh, as well. Mm. Uh, so can we, Doctor, can we say that it's uh, the, uh, the gradient depends, depending on the height and the conductivity, conductivity depending on the medium? Yes, 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 you are very good. You are very right. Yes, good. Okay, thank you. I get the welcome. Thank you. Yes, you are welcome. Any other questions? Okay, let's move on to another point, which is the well. So, when we say that we have a well, it means that I'm going to drill a vertical pipe inside this saturation zone. And of course, the uh, insertion it should be higher uh, inside the water table so for example if you are going to insert vertical pipe to that area only will you going to get a water of course not you are not going to get any water in order to have a well you need to insert the vertical pipe inside the saturation zone so if this is the case we are going to say we have a well. So, a well is a hole bored into the zone of saturation. And of course, it should be below the water table. So, why we are going to use well? The well is the perfect method in order to obtain the underground water. So, if I wanted to obtain underground water, I'm going to install a well. And in order to install a well, the insertion of the vertical pipe, it should be within the saturation zone. In other words, it should be below the water table. And if you are going to withdraw or remove water from the saturation zone, of course, near that uh, location, we are going to see depression or decrease in the 
water table level. So here you can see because I withdraw a water through that well, then I'm going to have decrease in the water table. So when we say draw down, it means that the water is withdraw from the well. The surrounding water table is lower, like we can see here. Also, it's very important to know what's known as cone of depression. So if you are going to have a higher amount of water, which means that you are going to withdraw a great deal of water, like this one. So here we have a normal well. We are going to consume a reasonable amount of water in this location and in that location. But if I'm going to uh, install a high capacity well in that location, which means that I'm going to absorb a lot of water, instead of have a lower uh, level of the water table, in that case, we are going to have what, uh, what, uh, what's known as cone of depression. So we are going to have a great deal or we are going to have a large difference in the water table. And the slope of the water table in that region, it will increase dramatically, like this one. And of course, the water from that location will try to go in that area, mainly because here we have a steeper slope of the water table. So a cone of depression is like a cone-shaped depression in the water table forms around a well. And especially if we are going to have, uh, if you are going to absorb a lot of amount of soil, of water. And the hydraulic gradient increases near wells with the cone of depre depression, like we see here. The hydraulic gradient, it will increase because we have a cone of depression. Any questions so far? Are we good so far? Does it make sense for all of you? Okay, let's move on. You have question? Okay, let's move on. Also, we have what's so-called perched water table. So this one is a special phenomena. Okay, in that case, we are going to have aquator. Remember, aquator is impermeable layer inside the uh, soil. If you have imper impermeable layer, it means the water cannot cannot move uh, uh, slowly, or it cannot move easily. So here we have aquator suited above the main water table. Here, the main water table is here. And we have aquator, which means that we have impermeable layer in that location. And in that location, we the precipitation will take place. The water, it will go here and some of the waters, it will go there. The water which collected at that region cannot go to the uh, main water table. If I have a water here, it can easily go to the main water table. So as a result, I'm going to have aquifer above the aquifer. In that case, I'm going to have aquifer above the aquifer. Even though the level of the water table here is higher than the level of the main water table. We call this situation perch water table. So if you are going to stall a well in that location, it means that I'm going to, I'm not going to get any water because the water here, uh, or because the uh, main water table is below the bottom of the a well. And if you going to install a well in that location here, you are going to have a successful well because here you have aquifer and here you have aquifer. And also, it's very important to know that if you have intersection with the uh, uh, ground service here, then you are going to have something called a spring. So you are going to have a spring. 
if you have intersection between purchase, water table, and the service ground. So here we are going to have a spring in that area because we have intersection between the purchase, purchased water table, and the ground service. So this is a unique phenomena where you are going to have spring or if you install a well you are going to get water even though the well itself is above the main water table and also we have what's known as artesian well or artesian spring also it's very unique phenomena in that system the groundwater under pressure rises above the level of the aquifer. So to understand this, we are going to look at that figure here. So here, of course, we have the precipitation zone, which means that this one is going to be called recharge area. So the water, it will infiltrate inside the ground. Then, like you can see, I have a slope here. I have inclined slope or inclined region. So if this one, if we have the, the level of the uh, groundwater is here, that means we are going to have pressure service. That means the pressure, the line of the pressure, it will be here. And if that's the case, that means the pressure of the water inside the uh, aquifer here is going to be at that level. In order to have case like that, you need to have two conditions. The first conditions, you need to have a slope like this one. The other conditions or the other condition, you should have a quarter above and a quarter below the aquifer. So here we have the aquifer the storage of the groundwater. Above, I have aquifer, which means that I have impermeable layer. And also beneath the aquifer, I have another aquifer. In that case, we are going to call this confined aquifer because the uh, aqu aquifer cannot move upward or downward. So in order to have artesian, uh, system, you need to have a slope or inclined area like this one. Also, you need to have confined aquifer. You are going to have con confined aquifer. That means you have a quarter above and a quarter below. So, in that case, since the pressure service is like that, if you are going to insert a well inside the confined aquifer, what do you think will happen? The water is going to try to rise to the uh, pressure surface? Yes, the water will reach the surface without any mechanical means in order to get the water. So here the water automatically, it will rise and you can see the water like this one, in that case. And we are going to call this flowing artesian well. So if you are flowing artesian well, that means automatically, because of the pressure, the water will appear on the surface of the ground surface. On, so the, other hand, this wall. on the other hand, if you have a well in that location here, if you install a well in that area, and as you can see, the level of the well is below the pressure uh, service. In that case, the water will try to rise, but it will not appear on the ground service. Okay, so either to have flowing artesian pressure or having non-flowing artesian well. If you have flowing artesian well, that means the uh, ground service is lower than the pressure service, or the pressure service is higher than the ground service and you could have non-flowing artesian well and in that case 
the pressure service is lower than the ground service. So you could have artesian well. In order to have that, the first condition, water must be confined to an inclined aquifer, which means that we need to have a slope. The other condition, we need to have aquators must exist above and below the aquifer to confine the water. And in that case, we are going to call it confined aquifer. And the artesian wells, it could be non-flowing artesian wells. Well, in that case, the pressure service is below the ground level. And we could have flowing artesian well. In that case, pressure service is above the ground. And we need to know that not all artesian systems are, are wells. We could have springs. If you have fracture inside the ground water, you could have a spring. And sometimes the artesian system are responsible for forming desert oasis. So this one is a desert oasis where we have artesian system because of the pressure, we could have something like that. Okay, so uh, so do you have any question regarding the artesian system? So again, if you are going to have artesian system, you have a number of conditions. You need to have inclined area or inclined aquifer, which means that the aquifer itself it has a slope in the beginning. Okay, and because of that slope, a pressure will be uh, provided. Uh, in that case, if you have something like that, the pressure service it will be here, which means that we have a high pressure in that region here. So if you are going to install a well in that location, then the water it will flow out, and we call this flowing artesian well. And if you install a well in that location, like this one here, you are not going to have a water outside because the pressure service is lower than the uh, ground service. And the same concept it will be applied at the municipal water tours. Remember in the Ministry of Water in your region, you are going to see uh, a water tank like this one. Okay, so mainly you are going to have a water tank in order to have artesian system. So we are going to make comparison between this system and that system. Here we are going to create a slope. We are going to create a slope, and as a result, we are going to create a pressure. So assume I have underground uh, water here. So, so I'm going to bump the underground water into the tank. Now, by doing this, I'm going to create a service pressure at that region. So here, I'm going to have uh, the pressure service, okay? And the pipes, it's going to be like the aquifer. So the pipes, like this one. And the tank, like that point. And the taps inside your house, it will be like the flowing artesian well. So the taps, like the artesian, flowing artesian wells. So we are going to use the same concept in nature and apply it in our city. Okay, so the towers act the recharge area, and the pipes acts like the, the the aquifer, like the aquifer, and the taps is like the flowing artesian well. Okay, any question regarding this? Okay, let's move on. If you don't have any question, also we are going to talk about the springs. We say that. We could have a spring if we have intersection between the water table and the ground surface. So whenever I have intersection between the water table and the ground table, we are going to have a spring, which is the natural outflow of the water. And we have many geological situations lead to formation of the springs, not just the purchase water table. We talk about the purchase water table, in this case, we say that if we have intersection with the ground service, we're going to have spring. Also, in the case of the uh, artesian system, if you have fracture here, and because the pressure is very high, also we are going to have a spring. 
So many geological situations lead to formation of springs. Okay, so here we have the recharge area, and here we have the underground water. If you have fractures inside the uh, earth, then you are going to have spring. And also, you know that the spring, it could be hot. So if the water, water in a hot spring is 6 degrees Celsius to 9 degrees Celsius, warmer than the mean annual air temperature of lo locality. In that case, we are going to say we, are going, we have hot spring. And the reason for that heat, because of the cooling of the igneous rock. Remember the igneous rock, the, when the magma erupt uh, inside the uh, earth itself, sometimes the magma is going to be cooled inside the earth. And because of that cooling, if you have a groundwater around, the groundwater is going to be heated. So most springs, we can say more than 95%, are heated this way and also some hot spring water is warm by the geothermal gradient we know the we discuss the geothermal concept as we go below toward the centers the uh, heat of the earth is going to be increased but mainly we are the we are going to have hot spring uh, because of the cooling of the igneous rock so i think i'm going to finish here I'm going to give you the floor to ask questions. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.